Hello and welcome to another fantastically interesting video from the Grimm's Monads Workshop. So this week I want to talk about filtering coolant. Now on my Tormac and all CNC machines, um, coolant is used to both uh, cool the cutting tool and the workpiece and as well as um, lubricate the cutting tool and also more importantly evacuate chips from the cutting edge because you don't want to recut chips all the time so you want to blast them away with tons and tons of coolant. Um, because recutting chips is a bad thing. So I have upgraded coolant pump and I have more pressure and all that stuff um, but I had a certain cut where it looked like I was still recutting chips and it was pretty obvious. Um, and it finally, finally occurred to me why and that's because there is so much crap floating around in my coolant and chips, like sizable chips floating around my coolant that are actually going through the whole system and coming out the coolant nozzle and getting shot directly at the cutter so the cutter is forced to recut them and smear them into the workpiece so like when you know we CNC machine our blades and I'm lazy so I'll just show you a cell phone picture here so here's one of our blades you can see all these streaky marks right here uh, that's it's been happening kind of a lot lately um, and the theory is that it's spitting chips through the coolant directly at the cutter and the cutter can't do anything except for smudge them into the workpiece. Um, so this is even after being polished out. It's still, you know, sometimes, most of the time we can polish them out, but sometimes they're just kind of just deep enough that it's still a problem. So I finally uh, cleaned my coolant tank and I drained out all the coolant from it and uh, I hadn't cleaned it for an entire year and I've been running it a lot and so this is what there's my pump and this is how much chips were floating around at the bottom and there's even more at the bottom under that last little layer of water there um, quite a lot of stuff and when this is full a lot of those get not airborne but waterborne and then the pump just sucks them up and spits them out and bad juju. So, I'm rambling, but um, so I did my research online, I looked up, you know, coolant filtration system and the first ones that come up are like $800 and I'm like, is it really worth $800 for me to do that? I don't know. I don't know about that. And then so I kept looking and looking and on forums and stuff and then I found some that were like $400 and then I found some that were like 275 and I'm like, Maybe 275, yeah, that's, that's not too bad. Um, and then I was reading a forum post, and one guy was like, everybody else was suggesting these expensive ones, and one guy was like, I have 23 CNC machines in my shop, and I use Home Depot, they're called uh, Whole House Water Filters. And it's basically this. Uh, so this bad boy is $43 from Home Depot. And it comes with three filters, one in and then two spares. Uh, and you can get the filters in all different micron ranges. These happen to be 50 micron. Um, a lot of guys in the forum were suggesting like 200 micron, 100 micron is plenty fine enough. Um, a lot of the ones that they sell at Home Depot are more like 5 and 1 micron, which is tiny, tiny stuff. That might be too restrictive for a machine with dirty coolant in it. But we'll see. I love the clear container because then all the chips will accumulate on the outside and you can see them and then it's awesome so I spent as I said forty three dollars for this and then uh... fittings, fittings. All right. so then I got a whole bunch of fittings from Home Depot fittings are not too cheap from Home Depot I think I spent over fifty dollars just in fittings and then eight each for the gauges from a different store. So I'm into it for about $120, $110, $120, something like that. Um, so the gauges are, I learned through reading, that you put it on either side of the filter and then pressure in, pressure out, and then if pressure, if one of them is a lot higher than the other, it means your filter is clogged and you can watch the gauges. Um, very quickly and easily and tell when to replace your filter. Apparently they're good for like three to six months, which is a lot. These filters are really cheap too, they're like dollars each. 
And if you get them online on Amazon or whatever, then they're even cheaper. Well, maybe not cheaper than dollars, but you can get good ones for cheap. Um, so yeah, I'm just currently putting all the things together so that they're tight and leak-free and all that, and then I'm going to figure out where to mount this thing. Um, another one that a lot of guys are using, it's called the, the Big Blue Filter. They're like $88 from Home Depot, and in pictures, it looks like this. In real life, they're about this big. They're freaking enormous. I couldn't fit it around my machine, so I chose to go with the much smaller, more compact one. Uh, that's half the price. So, anyway, I'm rambling. Let's get these fittings on. I just wanted to start some video and uh, show y'all what's going on. So, as you can see, I'm using Teflon tape for all the connections just because I don't want any leaks and this makes me feel better, even though it takes a lot of time. Um, yeah, just about done. I do reckon that'll do. Tight, Teflon taped, straight. Cool. I like it. So now that I have the fittings all on, the next question is to figure out where to mount this thing. Um, my first thought was to mount it kind of like right here. Um, that way it's super obvious and I can always see it and I can always see the gauges and I can always know if it's getting clogged or whatnot. Uh, another option might be to just hang it over the side here but keep the gauges showing. Um, however, tormac has got a new enclosure coming out that uh, I'm going to be getting real soon here. And uh, I can't put it behind there because then I won't be able to see it. So, I don't know, I could mount it on the side here, but my table's kind of right there. That would be a good place for it, though. Yeah, that might be a really good place for it, actually. But the other thing about this filter is there's no bracket, there's no mounting bracket. That uh, the big boy one that I was talking about actually has, comes with a nice bracket with four bolts on the back, you can just, this, I, I don't know how to hold this thing. The, you can't hold it from the bottom because the bottom needs to be able to unscrew to get the, the filter out. Um, my best thought is just to have something that comes out and holds it like this you know, two little rods or little hooks or something that can hang it over the edge. I don't know. Not too complicated, hopefully. But I'll figure that out. So mounting hooks weren't actually all that difficult. What I did was I found some 309 welding wire, 309 stainless steel, and I just bent them into these hooky shapes. They go like that. They can wrap around to secure and then these will go right around the fittings. So for a quick and dirty solution, I'm pretty happy with it. Come on. No. going anywhere. It's pretty cool to me. Um, I don't know, if this part gets too heavy and unbends itself, it, it could fail, maybe. It's worth a shot. So I could either mount it here on the outside, or I could mount it right here on the inside. But I, I kind of like the thought of having coolant inside my mill. You know, there's a lot of leak possibilities here. The whole thing could have a crack in it, and I don't want coolant all over my floor. Pretty obvious if there's a leak or if there's a uh, uh, pressure differential or whatever. You know, you got the two gauges. And my cooling line is right here anyway. So I'll figure it out, but um, yeah, that'll probably do it until I get it all plumbed up and turn it on tomorrow.
cool, exciting. Okay, I've got it all hooked up, uh, relatively drama free. Didn't have to lengthen the hoses or anything, I just sort of looped it around and hose clamped it in. And I haven't turned it on yet, but I'm just about to. So I've just got the coolant going into a bucket here. Hopefully it won't make a mess. And we'll see what happens with the uh, that stuff. Sweet! Cool, it's working. Actually getting 6 PSI. 6 there and just under 6 there. So a little bit of pressure drop, that's fine. Gotta make sure I don't overfill this thing. But yeah, you can see some, some bubbles floating around. So I'm hoping all the all the loose chips will accumulate on the outside and you can see them. And uh, Neato Torpedo. So I'm running a synthetic coolant. Um, I don't know if I have a bottle right here. But it's a synthetic coolant so it's relatively clear. Um, and yellowy. But I mean, already, this is quite a bit cleaner than, better color than uh, normal. Cool. Normal coolants are like white and milky looking. But I like this one because it's clear and you can see through it when you're machining something. So I can zoom in on the, on the cutter and actually see what's going on. And it doesn't just cover the whole table in, in white milk. Um, so that's why I like the synthetic, but I think it's causing a lot of my rusting issues. So I think I need to switch to an oil-based coolant because uh, this is getting ridiculous. But yeah, I mean that's why every machine shop everywhere uses an oil-based coolant. <laughs> Might be able to learn something from that. However, that's awesome. Um, when I first did my quick testing, I put a 0 to 100 PSI gauge and it just just cracked it off of 0, like 1 PSI, so I'm happy to see that I'm getting 5 and 6 PSI here. Um, it should make it pretty obvious when there's a large differential. I'm assuming the input would be higher pressure and the output would be a lower pressure if there's a lot of blockage. Um, so yeah, so I'm running at 5 or 6 PSI and I just I was just reading today that a a new machine with a high pressure coolant goes at like 600 psi. Awesome, super duper awesome. That should trap a whole bunch of junk. I'm happy. This is great. Little tiny bit of crud on the top there, but it might have just like fallen down from something, or been in the bucket actually. The bucket was not clean to begin with. But yeah. Excellent. Well, that is how to install a coolant filter on the Tormac. About $100 in stuff. Um, it should prove to be a, a very nice tool to have. I love it. Alright, thank you so much for watching. Cheers. Bye.